Hi everyone, welcome to TechLix. This video is part of a series which charts our attempt to make a smart boy which takes measurements about the sea in just three weeks. In this episode, we're showing you how we controlled the power for the buoy. For this build, you'll need a battery, a buck booster, a charge controller, solar panels, blocking diodes, a power monitoring module, a real-time clock, an Arduino, and a P-channel transistor. The smart buoy is powered by an 18650 battery, which is charged by four 5-volt, 60 milliamp solar panels in parallel. The solar panels will sit around the buoy on all four sides and we'll put in some blocking diodes to stop reverse current into the panels. We used a charge controller to control the battery output and charge from the solar panels. The charge controller output isn't high enough to power the system stably, so we use a buck booster to increase the voltage to about 6 volts. We may be in sunny Grenada, but even here, the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day. To make sure we have enough power to operate the sensors, we use a real-time clock module to turn the system on and off. This module operates using the battery, but uses such a small amount of current it could run for years. We program the real-time clock module to have an alarm set based on how much power is in the battery. This value is inferred based on the battery voltage, which can be measured using a power monitor module. When the alarm is triggered, it changes the alarm pin from high to low. We can use this to turn on the transistor, which allows power to the Arduino. The system makes its measurements and turns off by clearing the alarm, changing the pin back to high, which turns off the transistor as well. Make sense? I'll now show you an example of programming an alarm to control the power of the Arduino. In this example, we'll use an Arduino to turn an LED on for three seconds and set an alarm for 15 seconds and then turn itself off. Once the 15 seconds have elapsed, the alarm will trigger, the LED will turn on and the whole cycle will repeat. As you can see, we've put the circuit together. It looks a little bit messy, but if you want to see exactly how we did it, refer to the schematic. There's a link in the description. We've uploaded the code onto the Arduino, which I'm going to take a couple seconds now just to speak through with you. First, we must include the real-time clock library and the wire library for I2C. Then we set the LED we are using as the one built into the Arduino. In the setup, we start the serial communication and I2C and then set that built-in LED as output. In the loop, we set the LED high, wait 3 seconds and then reset the alarm. In the reset alarm function, we send initiate communication. Then we set the alarm pin on the module to turn high on alarm trigger. Then we set the square wave to be square wave none, which basically means high or low is kept constant until changing. Then we set the current time as the start of all time used by this module. And then we set an alarm 15 seconds later and clear the flag, turning the device off. So the LED turns on and the alarm is set and the whole system turns off. So after the set time, the alarm should trigger and the LED should turn on. And then the whole thing happens again. Now I'll show you how to monitor battery voltage and current usage using the INA219 DC current monitor. This module communicates using I2C. Refer to the schematic for the connections that you need to make. A really nice library for talking to this module already exists. Let me show you just how easy it is. So we start by including the wire library for I2C and then the Adafruit power module library. 
then create an instance of the INA219 and all the values that it can show us. In the setup, we start the serial and then the communication with the INA219 and set the calibration current to 1 amp because this might be a safe way around its range. In the loop, we ask the INA219 for the shunt voltage, bus voltage, current, power and load voltage and then print them out. Finally, this is how we use the voltage to predict the optimal duration between alarms. The method is a bit crude, so if anyone has any better ideas of how we do it, please let us know in the comments below. So this one is a useful amalgamation of the two. We include the libraries, and the same in the setup. But in the reset alarm function, choose a time for the next alarm based on the voltage reading we get from the INA219 module. The resulting wait times are shown below. Thanks for following us through our journey making the smart boy. In the next video, we'll be showing you how we made the casing for the boy and where we decided to put it. See you next time.